Have you ever wanted to create a real-time voice AI agent that's fast and reliable without breaking the bank? Because in this video, we're going to achieve exactly that. I'm going to show you how I've upgraded my SQL voice AI agent that was previously using OpenAI's real-time API to now using this incredible open source tool called Ultravox. It's a real-time speech-to-speech model that costs only five cents a minute. And not only that, there are many other capabilities and features that are noteworthy. And stick around because I'll also be showcasing a demo of OpenAI's real-time API versus the Ultravox side-by-side -side so you guys can check the differences and judge for yourself. And finally, I'll briefly explain how I've built this application using WebRTC to get the best performance out of these models. Let's first quickly talk about the issues of using OpenAI's real-time API. So many of you have really loved my SQL voice AI agent and all of the other voice AI agents that I've covered in this channel because they have very low latency and great sounding voice models. However, when it comes to actually putting these in production and you're having long conversations or you want to scale out to many users, it can very quickly rack up the cost and it's very expensive to run. And this is where Ultravox comes in because it's open source, customizable, and a lot cheaper to run. So let's quickly look through their landing page and see what these guys are up to. So essentially it's an open way speech to speech model and they only cost five cents per minute. And these are some of the capabilities that they're able to do. They cover both web applications and voice over internet protocol. So we're able to build web applications, native applications, and also be able to integrate it with things like Twilio, and they also support other SIP providers. It's multilingual, so by default, they have many different languages and they fine tune their own model and they have the capability of bringing your own model. So if you have a model, you can sort of fine tune it to a specific case or scenario and then you're able to use it with Ultravox. So here we have the benchmarks. You can see the Ultravox Llama 3.170B is actually performing really well. Uh, GPT-40 real-time, so this is the real-time API one. This is just only slightly higher. However, you can see that it's a lot better than the others. And the fact that this is open source is crazy um, and it's only going to get better with time, right? So we're able to do function calling, interruptions, custom voices, voice cloning, rag support. So it has all these capabilities that you would expect from a voice AI agent provider and more because you're able to fine tune your own model, bring your own model, etc. Um, so let's quickly cover the documentation. So they currently support 15 different languages. They have tools, they have cool stages, and I'll cover that in just a second. Conversation history, voice cloning, SDK. So you're able to, like I said, build it in like Python, TypeScript. You can have a webhook integration. You can have WebRTC integration and also be able to connect it with telephony integrations. They have some examples here that you can follow. Uh, the documentation is really well laid out. It has everything that you'd need to get started. So definitely check this out. Um, so let's quickly cover cool stages. So this is more for the advanced users that want to create more dynamic and multi-stage conversations. And essentially what you're able to do is if I actually show you guys this in a flowchart. So for example, we have a scenario where we want to do some data gathering where the agent needs to collect lots of data, for example, like job applications, medical intake forms, or applying for a mortgage. So here we have an example for mortgage application. So stage one can be just like greeting a customer and basic information gathering. And then based on a set criteria, you move to stage two where we do some financial assessment and then goes to property evaluation, presentation of the, the different options of loans, and then you do a handoff to a loan officer. So this is a very simple example. Um, we also have a, another example where we want to switch context. So a scenario where the agent needs to navigate different context, example like custom support escalation. And here we have a three stages system where the first one is again, just greeting and identification of the problem. Stage two is when we do some troubleshooting. And the final stage is basically resolution or escalation to like another stage or a human support agent. So this is just to give you some understanding of how cool stages work. And the cool part is every stage has its own dynamic system prompts. So for every stage, you're able to modify the prompts and add or remove some things. It's very flexible. So you have full control to determine when and how you want to, the conversation to progress to the next stage. And of course, the AI will always have context and conversational history of everything that's happened in the previous stages. I feel like this feature really opens up a world of possibilities for creating truly dynamic and context aware voice agents. And before we get into the demo, I want to just quickly cover some of the things that Ultravox got in a pipeline. I had a chance to speak with the founder of Ultravox and here are some of the amazing updates they have in the pipeline for this year. They're working of three main areas and the first one is uh, the model improvement so adding support for up to 44 different languages and I believe by the time that this video is out that will be available they're also working to improve the model and handle real world scenarios better like overlapping speakers and background noise plus they're introducing something called neural VAD 
for voice activation detection for a more natural turn taking where the AI actually decides when it's turned to speak just like humans do. So the second area that they're focusing on is the real-time service upgrades. So they're working on a built-in rag system that will let the agent actually pull relevant data in real time for more intelligent responses. And this is really cool because currently we have to basically use a third party like Pinecoin or Superbase to retrieve data. And this usually takes a bit longer. So this will be a really cool feature if we're able to retrieve information real time. They're also working on custom evaluations. So tailored metrics to measure how well the agent is actually performing in specific use cases. Again, this is a super valuable feature because a lot of people miss out on testing and evaluating these voice AI agents. And this is where you can really unlock true performance and make sure you're actually building production ready voice AI agents. And lastly, they're working on human integration. So they're working on a drop-in feature. That's what they're calling it, where a human can seamlessly join a live call between the AI and the user to be able to take over if necessary. And I think this will be very valuable in some use cases. And finally, they're also just working on a dashboard to give developers better insights and control over their projects. I believe these updates are going to make Ultravox even more powerful and versatile and I honestly can't wait to see them in action and try them out and you can bet that I'll be covering them here on this channel like always so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right so if you remember from my previous video I have this SQL voice agent that I have built and it's using Next.js application and in the back end we have NA10 that's running our SQL agent and that's connected to our SQL database. So essentially it's just a quick way to interact with your SQL database ask it questions and get some insights. However, I've upgraded it to basically now be able to switch between Ultravox and OpenAI, as you can see here in the top right corner. And let's just give it a go. And first we're gonna cover OpenAI and see how it performs. Hey, how's it going? What can I help you with today? What can you actually do for me? Well, I can help you with anything related to financial data. Need reports, analysis. That's awesome, that's awesome. Can you tell me what was the total revenue for 2023 and now it goes ahead and fetches that information from the database and it comes back with the answer the total revenue for 2023 was forty seven thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars that's great and can you tell me what was the top products for 2023 Here are the top five products by revenue for 2023. Laptops and home theater systems lead the That's pack. That's great. Thank you. So, as you can see, um, it's really good. It's very fast. However, you need to just keep in mind that it costs a lot more than Ultravox. So now let's see what Ultravox does. Agenix AI Solutions, this is Sam. How can I help you today? Hi, Sam. What can you do for me? I can help with all sorts of financial data questions need help with a report or maybe some awesome. insights on market. Could you market. tell me what was the total revenue for 2023? The total revenue for 2023 was 47,000. I'm at a one. Anything else I can help you with? That's awesome. Could you tell me what were the top products for 2023? The top products for 2023 were the laptop, home theater system, Show me smart a chart showcasing this information. Here's a bar chart showing the top products for 2023. Let me know if you have any other questions. That's awesome. Thank you. Right. So as you can see, it behaves almost exactly the same as OpenAI's. The only problem, and you might have noticed this as well, is when it comes to reading out the numbers, it messes up a little bit. Um, I'm sure this is something that they can sort of fine tune and fix on the model. And also notice that when it comes to prompting this model, it requires a bit more fine tuning of the prompt because again, it's uh, using Llama and that's a bit different when it comes to prompting Llama models to OpenAI's ChatGPT models, right? So these are just some of the things that you'd want to keep in mind. But yeah, other than that, it works amazingly. There's no issues. Again, this is using WebRTC. So let's quickly look at the code and explain how this is built. Right, so here I've done a quick diagram showcasing the complete code base and how everything links together and all the main functions and components. So at first we have the user interface, we have the mic button, um, we select the AI voice model at the top right corner. So OpenAI or Ultravox. 
And once we click the mic button, that first initializes the audio service. So we're able to pick up audio from the mic and initialize the WebRTC connection and also set up the audio stream. So how WebRTC works is just data channels and then you assign audios or text or videos to those channels, those data streams. So no matter which model we use, um, we process them differently because the documentations are different. However, we then just start the streaming for OpenAI or we start the Ultravox call for Ultravox. And then it's just the same sort of function detection if I ask questions and it detects the SQL query function, it goes ahead and sends that query to the NA10 SQL agent. And if it's a regular chat, we just sort of respond in text responses. There's also a third function. It's just not shown here. It's the visualization of the data. It's shown at the bottom here because it usually comes after the NA10 SQL agent comes back with the response. So we update the UI, display the messages, we play the audio, and we also show the visuals if there are any. And this is basically just a very brief overview of how the application works. So this is a Next.js application, and I've built it using WinSurf, of course. How I've done it is just using the instruction prompt of everything I wanna do. And this gives the model everything I needs to know of the application that I'm trying to build out. So I started off with the NA10 and WebRTC for OpenAI integration. Once that was working, I added the Ultravox documentation here. So I asked it to follow the same implementation with OpenAI's real-time API and implement the same thing for Ultravox. Using the Ultravox documentation, I just pasted everything that the model needs to know, all the different functions and how to set it up. And this is basically all I had to do. So yeah, using Windsurf, again, it's amazing. If you want to learn about Windsurf, I've done a full tutorial covering how to actually use Windsurf to build out these kind of applications. So make sure you check that out. So inside of the application, we have four different API endpoints. The first one's for the OpenAI's real-time API. We start off by initializing the session and getting the token to be able to then open up a WebRTC connection. We also have the Ultravox and this is how it looks like. So we start off by creating a new Ultravox call and this is just a simple API call to the endpoint and we pass in the model, the system prompt. I have a constant of the system prompt somewhere in the code. The voice that I'm using is Mark. Uh, I like to put the temperature really low. Um, always works best for these kind of things. And you can see here, the really cool part is we're able to actually set the first speaker to be the agent. You know how usually we would have to send out the initial message ourselves so that the agent can speak first. But using Ultravox, we're able to just quickly set the first speaker to be the agent so that we don't wait until we speak for the model to interact with us. The medium, again, we're using WebRTC. There's webhooks and there's also other ones that you can pick. And here we have the tools. So we got the query database tool and we have the visualization tool. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to add this variable here for the timeout. Otherwise it will time out quickly because when we're doing a SQL query, it usually takes a few seconds. And if it doesn't come back with a response quick enough, it would just time out and the agent will say it doesn't have access to the data. So you want to increase this. I'm using 15 seconds here and that usually covers it. So this will be it for this video. I want to hear what you guys think. So please comment down below if you think that Ultravox will actually take over the space or do you see problems with it? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you want the complete source code to the application, I will always include that in my school community. So check the link in the description below. And if you want to see more Ultravox tutorials and you want me to build out all the different features that they offer, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, hit that like and subscribe button. It will really help out a lot. Until next time, take care.